All right, back to the markets. Me Schneider, Chief Strategist at MarketGage.com is with me. Good afternoon, Mish. good to see you. So, so how nice are you feeling you. about the markets where we've been seeing a lot of selling lately? Well, there's a few reasons. I'm, yes, I think I heard you mention before that things might have been a little bit overbought. So there is certainly uh, a situation where a natural correction in the markets happens all the time. And we're only down about 5% in the SPY from the highs. A typical correction could be as much as 10%. So I don't think that's so abnormal. Um, and of course, a lot of Fed speak that we've seen with a lot of fear that the rates are going to stay higher for longer. And just some natural rotation, too, into some other areas. Obviously, commodities have been all the rage. So yeah, to me, this kind of makes sense right now. But nothing has broken down to a point where we're more in a caution phase as opposed to some kind of distribution or even looking at some kind of a big bearish move. Mm -hmm, understood. I'm also reading some of the Fed Beige Book notes at the same time where um, I'm sure you saw a lot of it was the same. Employment rose at a slight pace. Manufacturing in a few areas did see upside risk for inflation. Economic activity expanded slightly. But this one, um, energy prices on the rise, sharp increases in insurance rates. Um, you don't have to comment on any of these, but I do think it's important. I mean, I think everybody who gets insurance it's something that we talk about at dinner all over the place. Everywhere I go, people are talking about how their insurance has gone up, whether it's auto insurance or homeowner's insurance. Um, you have a few names that you're watching here, um, different categories. How about Novo Nordisk, for example? Let's get into that one. That's a pick you have. Yeah. Well, you know, I've had this idea of how consumer spending habits have shifted. Uh, and we certainly have seen that, even though uh, UAL came out with good earnings and had a pop. Basically, people are stopping eating out as much and eating home more. Groceries have come down a little bit, not obviously in all areas. But the big move, and it's really just starting, is in this idea of these diet drugs and what will happen as a result. So obviously, Norma Nordisk is, is, is one of them. Uh, Eli Lilly would be another one. These companies in and of themselves, they have corrected. And if the market stabilizes, I think, offer good opportunities. Because I believe this whole area, especially if these diet drugs come down in cost and go more and more mainstream, that we will start to see more people taking advantage of that to deal with the obesity that they may have not been able to successfully deal with before. So yeah, that's why those names are on my list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, without a day, the semi-glutide are just so popular and still going um, and still unavailable, right? Some of them are, you can't even get them. You can't right. manufacture them fast enough. Elf Beauty AV. Well, that's I, so. This is this is where that domino trickle effect is intriguing to me. That what will happen is you may have a whole new set of consumers who feel better about themselves if they do indeed have sustainable weight loss. And then what will they do as a result? They'll start going out more. So. Generally speaking, when people are finally feeling better about themselves, they start to take care better of their skin, their hair, their makeup. Um, you know, it could trickle into other areas as well. Maybe, maybe at some point, dating, um, fashion, going to the gym. But for now, Elf has been a hot stock all year and has also come off to an interesting point. So the same kind of thing. It's it's very distributable inexpensive makeup uh, and, and, and has really been proving to be a winner in terms of, let's say, comparing it to Estee Lauder or Cody. So we'll stick with the winners right now and say that would be another place to go for a longer term investment. Yeah. I've had a lot of great conversations with the chief financial officer, Mandy Fields, has been on this show um, a couple of times. And it just, you know, the price point is very, very desirable and doable for folks. And um, the company has grown really exponentially since this IPO here at the New York Stock Exchange. So you have AbbVie, the solar ETF, TAN would be another one too. 
Well, the, my theory on TAN is twofold. Number one is, now we do see the oil prices relax a little bit, but what I think the message has been to the universe, if you will, is that oil can be extremely volatile given not only supply demand, but obviously geopolitical situation, and solar energy kind of fell out of favor. But it looks like it may be coming back into favor, even though Tesla and EVs have come off a lot in terms of the whole solar universe for several reasons. One being that some of these big AI companies are using solar energy to try to get their carbon footprint because they use so much raw materials lower. That's number one. Number two is China is really trying to switch more back into the solar energy space. And, and I think even in this country, there's still a lot of incentives to go more solar, and that will increase. And from a price point perspective, if you're looking at TAN, at around $40, it's at a really good support point. Would I run in today? Maybe, but I would probably have a little bit more patience to see if the market, again, can get some footing and not have too much more of a correction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, as I see, for example, um, United Airlines says that uh, demand environment remains strong, and it just shows how consumers are spending. They are resilient. Um, they, I mean, they're affected, no doubt, by the higher rate environment and inflation, but still out there spending and doing. Do you think there is a chance of a recession? Or are you concerned about the consumer and how things could come to a standstill? Well, I think the biggest concern for the consumer, I mean, obviously, we're already seeing stress of higher interest rates to a degree and also higher inflation. But like I said, that inflation is very nuanced right now. It's not all over the place, and it's really been metal-dominated. And of course, metals right now are more responding to geopolitics. But getting back to the consumer, what is interesting, something that I read, is that because of all the money that fl flood into flooded into fixed income, that people have made a lot of money on these short-term interest bonds and have taken yeah, that money true. and used that to increase their personal wealth. So I don't think the I, the consumer has been pretty uh, versatile in terms of that. You know, there was a huge amount of, of shorts into the bond market and people buying fixed income. So if they're gonna start to unwind that money, that's new money that they have. In terms of your question on recession, I'm still looking more stagflation because we still have a robust mm -hmm. labor market, but the housing, especially new construction has been a bit of a concern. And I may be a little bit more in the camp of the rates have peaked and possibly, especially since Biden sort of relayed this a couple of weeks ago, we may actually see at some point this year a couple of cuts, which would make sense because of the cost of the debt and the interest rate payments are so high and the stress to commercial banks so great that it may behoove the Fed to ignore inflation, considering it's nuanced, and instead mm -hmm. try to avert some kind of real debt crisis. All right. Thank you for all of that. Your insight, your stock picks. Mish Schneider, chief strategist at marketgage.com. Always great to see you, Mish. Thank you very much.